much drama. Um, <laughs> a lot of people have been writing me saying that they saw my live stream where I, I watched Repsion's video about joy and reacted to it live. I was having myself a glass of wine, maybe too much, but <laughs> um, I had a good time watching the video. There were a lot of interesting things that I didn't know before and I did have a lot of opinions about it so i let all that go in a live stream but i i didn't post it anywhere like together on youtube i know the blog uploaded a couple of segments one of my reaction and one of my um a uh, time where i was guesting joy so that's out there if you want to check it out i i've condensed it a bit though because those are like nearly an hour long each so i've, I've put together this shorter video if you guys are curious to get like the gist of everything uh basically uh, I, I agree with Repsion on everything that he said, um, but I did feel a little dirty watching it just because it felt like some of it was a little unnecessary. Look, there's a cat crawling up my leg. Hi, Tippy. Hi. Get up. What are you doing? <laughs> She's so cute. Um, yeah, I just felt like it, it was a little bit too aggressive towards her without a lot of a lot of reason to. I mean, like I get that there are certain things about you know, her videos that might be frustrating for people because of the volume of, you know, certain topics. Uh, but overall, I've, in my, my experiences with her have been good. She's always been nice to me. Uh, and through the Onision drama that I went through, she was defending me and I will always appreciate that. Um, so, you know, I went into this video knowing who Repsion is and, and liking him as a person and knowing who Joy is and liking her as a person. So um, it was a little bit of a weird situation and I tried to be as neutral as I possibly could be. Um, I, <laughs> I think it's interesting. I want to mention this. I did hear that Joy, after my time talking to her on my broadcast, she did say that I was asking all the wrong questions, which is interesting because like my only question of concern, you'll see this after you watch the broadcast, my only question that I cared about was, are you a charlatan? Were you at some point lying about abilities that you possessed in order to profit? That's all I wanted to know. Uh, because it either means, you know, maybe you're not a skeptic, that's fine, but if you're conning people, that's problematic, but I don't think that's what she was doing. And that's the only only question I wanted to ask. So I wasn't trying to ask the wrong questions, I was trying to ask the only question I wanted to know. The first part of it is me just like watching Repsion's video, and then there is the part where I am interviewing her, I guess, talking to her. It wasn't an interview, it was a you now guest. It's like super casual. I just wanted to know about the charlatan thing, and then that's basically it. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Enjoy, and I'll see you later. Yeah, okay, so like I remember whenever she was doing the Onision thing, we started like privately talking, and I did tell her at one point that I think, or maybe it was on a You Now, or we were, or I guested her, or something happened where I was talking to her, and I communicated that I wish that she had a bit of her own thing and diversified. That was like my one complaint with her. Like, if you, if you completely build your audience based off of, you know, exposed videos on other YouTubers that have an audience, um, it is to a degree, you know, basically using their name to take their fans to grow your own audience, which is kind of a cheap way of growing a channel on YouTube. Um, you know, some channels have really benefited from this and that's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it sometimes, you know, even if, even if you do it often, I don't think it's wrong necessarily, but I feel like if that's all you have, it's a little weird because it's like you don't have your thing. Like you don't have the thing that makes you you. You know, for me, like me, for example, like I have the fact that I do atheism videos and I do like I comment on social issues and things like that. Like I have my channel is my opinion. So like, you know, I put out my opinions, but not every opinion is a clickbait, not clickbait, is not, you know, name dropping in order to gain that audience. You know what I mean? Um, and like same thing with Richie, like he does clickbait videos, he does drama videos, he does put YouTubers names in his titles, but his thing, his core thing is music. Um, and that because of those things, it's not like your channel is completely built on the audience and name of other people. And one thing I did tell her was, you know, I wish that you diversified your content a little bit so that you did kind of have your own voice that was separate from Onision. And then she did, and but it kind of turned from Onision to obsessing over Daddy of Five. And like I've said before, um, 
that whole daddy of five thing happened after I was recovering, like during the time that I was recovering from surgery. So I didn't, I wasn't really active on the internet at the time that that story broke. So I kind of missed that whole thing. So I wasn't really aware at how the length that she was obsessing over daddy of five. But I do remember seeing a couple of those videos, not realizing the quantity and thinking, oh, good, she's not talking about Onision. She took my advice. But it kind of just switched from one obsession to another. And then she, after that, continued talking about Onision some more. So it's like, I don't, I don't know. Um, she was hired by a company, a music production company, to do angelic channeling. Um, and I have to ask these, this, this question. Did you pay people to perform angelic, angelic channeling? Because if you paid people, if people came to you and paid money for you to perform angelic channeling, then I am accurate to say that you're a fraud. Yeah. That you were a con artist because I don't believe in angelic channeling. I don't believe in casting out demons. I don't the thing believe is about that, in people telling you you're. I am with Daniel 100%. I don't believe in any of this shit, but at the same time, not all people who do this kind of crazy shit are charlatans. Now, charlatans are people who are purposefully preaching things that they don't themselves believe in for profit. You know, and sometimes there are people that buy their own special brand of bullshit. They actually think that they're a psychic. They actually think that they're a faith healer of some kind. Um, and, and these people, although, like, I still don't, I still don't like it. And it still does feel very gross to me. I don't, um, I don't think that they're at heart bad people, you know? Uh, technically, anybody who prays. Anybody who says a prayer and genuinely believes that their prayer is getting to God and that God is answering that prayer and that because of that prayer something happens, they're the, they're the same. They buy, they believe that they have control. Oh, my, my point with that is that, like, you know, he's kind of, and, and we haven't gotten further, so maybe he'll, like, provide, you know, a reasoning for this, but he's kind of right now saying that she's essentially a charlatan, meaning she's lying about even believing that she has the ability. She's like just like pretending to have something so that people pay her. Psychic abilities to reach out and talk to dead people or whatever it be. I find that area of new age, of whatever you want to call it, to be a scam. Uh, that's just too. my personal opinion. I do too. Uh, if you did pr charge people for money to perform your angelic channeling, you by definition to me are a con artist. Uh, see, this is where I this is where I can't hop on board with this, because like I said, people sell nonsense all the time. There's all kinds of psych psychics, all kinds of faith healers, all kinds of crystal healers. I recently spoke with a lady who was a crystal healer. I don't think she was a con artist, though. I do think that she was selling bullshit to people, but I don't think she believed it was bullshit herself. Um, and, and in that way, I don't think that I don't think that if the person who's doing this kind of stuff. If they're not trying to trick people, it doesn't make it not wrong. Like, I still have a problem with it. But if they're not trying to trick people, I'm not going to call them a con artist. I'm going to call them a delusional person. I was on you now. You mentioned how you cured this inoperable tumor that was killing you with garlic and onions. Uh, Josh, you see she includes cured cancer with herbs. I sure as fuck did. I really did. Um, but if you want to get judgmental and read about it, go for it. <laughs> I did, actually. And it wasn't cancer. It was a tumor. It was a non-cancerous non tumor. But go ahead and just keep making fun of me. Go for it. So I use... Oh. Okay, guys. For the record, cancer cannot be cured with garlic and herbs and onions and, and things like that. Tumors don't go away because of an onion. Um, and clearly she believes in a lot of nonsense, okay? Uh, she's not a skeptic. Ugh, that doesn't make her a bad person. It makes her a very frustrating person. I get very frustrated at stuff like this. Um, I've talked to many people, um, actually the, and you'll see this in my show, which comes out second week of September. Woo woo. I'm so excited. Um, but I, I, I speak with a crystal healer and she believed that if people used crystals properly, that they would never get cancer. And she believed this, completely believed this. Um, I have a real problem with that because it does two things. First of all, it makes people who do get cancer feel as though they, if only they'd used a crystal, which is bullshit, um, you know? 
it's not science. I don't like anything that promotes pseudoscience. You know, I don't even like calling it calling it something pseudoscience. It's that ridiculous. I feel like it gives it too much credit even. Um, it was something with no scientific basis, essentially. Um, pseudoscience is real. That's funny. That's a funny tweet. I should tweet that. Um, but the, the, the biggest, and my fear, my biggest fear with this type of mentality is that people will start to think, hey, if only I use a crystal, or hey, only if I, you know, eat more garlic, or, you know, sit on an onion, I don't fucking know, uh, if I do this shit, then this will cure whatever I'm dealing with now, and if somebody thinks that doing that thing is a good alternative to going to a doctor, it puts that person in serious danger, because if they're going to be like, oh, I'll just sit on this onion instead of going to you know, my oncologist, because I have cancer, th that person's going to die because of this ridiculous belief, you know, and, and that's where people say beliefs aren't dangerous. I'm like, excuse me, to me, that's, you know, asinine to begin with anyways. But if you believe that you can cure tumors with herbs, like it says right here, and you actually have a tumor and you try to, you know, cure it with some basil, you're going to die. <sighs> anyways, let's keep going. Dangerous shit. What I used back then, um, I used garlic. Um, I, I mean, to be fair, garlic is great as an antioxidant, and the more garlic you eat, the healthier you will be. But if you have something serious going on, ain't no piece of garlic, ain't no clove of garlic. I'm gonna cure AIDS, all right? <laughs> Repsion is misrepresenting what she said. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, like she's talking about it here. Onion, onion. I literally use onion. Um, olive leaf. Golden seal. See, she's thinking onions cure tumors. So I guess some onions cure tumors, but the Onision onion can give people tumors. There you go. I made a joke. <laughs> uh, so what are your feelings on the uh, video? Not much. I'll be honest. So like, and this is stuff you might not know, Jacqueline, but everything in the video I've like for months talked about and debunked. So, okay. Like, that's the, that's so you knew, you knew what was coming then. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm sorry. You can't see the lighting. It's dark. I know it's dark where you are too. Um, no, yeah, no. I I was very very aware. Um, in fact, I thought it was. I thought the video was fairly easy. I guess like I kind of I expected. I, I guess I expected a little a little more. But uh, yeah. I it's weird. Like I at first I was like I thought I looked at it and I was like I'm gonna respond to it. But I sat and like the whole thing is with him for weeks. Um, a lot of times when he teases it, he follows it up with. And you're going to make a million videos. And I sat there and I talked to like a couple of my friends about it. And they were just like, they were looking at me like, Joy, you've debunked all of this. Like, I know it's the same for you, Jacqueline, but every four to six weeks, the same rumors recycle. But then people yeah. think they found something new. And like that's, since I got on YouTube, that's what I've been going through. I've been really, really open about being a new ager in my past. And I even still have some like odd beliefs. But my issue, I, I would say the issue I had with the video was that so much of it, like literally out the gate, girl, the first sentence was inaccurate. The first sentence of the first piece of evidence, I'm like, that didn't happen. What is he like? <laughs> so, yeah. but, but it was, again, it's just, I kind of was in this place of like, do I, I think he wants a back and forth. Like, I think he wants a fight with me. And if I've already debunked this stuff over and over again, is it worth it to keep doing Like. And maybe he, I think it like, is only because um, he has like talked this video in particular up for a long time and has a sizable amount of people in his audience that maybe have not been exposed to you. So if you make a response video that is, you know, packaged, you know, specifically for this video that he made about you, there's a higher chance for the people who have seen his video to see yours and I don't know. I feel like if you made a video saying, you know, responding to Mr. Repsion or something that people would see that recommended next to his, which would be beneficial. I don't know. Um, if I were you, I would address it. Cause I, I think like maybe, especially in this kind of a situation, like to not would maybe s somewhat implicate yourself. And, you know see, I mean? and, and I agree too. I think, and this is where it gets kind of tricky. The other thing is that I was thinking about, I know that he has been, and I want to say this really, really lightly because I don't want people are going to get pissed if I, if I don't say this right or even if I say it at all. But the other thing I was thinking about is I know his, his family is going through a lot of health stuff. Like I know his dad is going through some stuff. 
And I just sat there and thought, like, I just, considering the fact that I've already talked about all this, I know that he's not in a real good place with all of that. I don't know if at the moment it would be appropriate. Like, when he was trying to get it together and he kept having to delay it and stuff and go back and forth because his dad was in the hospital. And, like, at that point, I was just like, well, fuck our drama. Does that make sense? Like, fuck any of that. Like, that's what, to me, is is really important. So just kind of... Kind but I mean, he, the video, but, but he's, he, he posted the video now, like he posted it today. He did. Yeah. So it's out he there did. and clearly like, you know, it's, it's on the table. It is. It is. Um, I don't, like I said, I, I, I don't know. I, I've, I've so far I've said for now, I don't want to, cause that's the other thing. I, I'm just, I think my, how do I put this is like, if he wants a fight and this is stuff I've already talked about, the best thing I could do is just not to give him the attention. That's kind of like, but I also see your point of it. That's the thing. Like, your but I mean, like, I feel like really the, too. yeah, the number one people thing people are probably going to say in response to that is you've given so much, <clears throat> sorry, you've given so much attention to people like Onision, who is, in my opinion, exponentially worse. Um, and so it, to not respond to Daniel for the purposes of not giving him attention seems a bit odd. When so much attention has been given to like Onision and, and Daddy of Five and people that are legitimately terrible, right, right. And I think though that's at the same time I'm not I'm not the kind of person that like I don't. It's also a weird area for me because at one point we were on I would call it friendly terms like we weren't friends or anything but we were on friendly terms and I'm not. I'm Just not word of advice: be careful who you're friends with on the internet. It could implode at any moment. Jacqueline, I <laughs> I, I learned that from the Onision thing. Lesson learned. Oh my girl, no, ev- like, okay, I hate to be like Jake Paul every day, bro. No, that is like, that's what I've learned. I've learned, I'm like, there are no real friendships on here, okay? Like, even tonight it happened, and another one imploded, and I was just like, really? And it's funny, because like, for me, if, if I have an issue with somebody, and I've been on friendly terms with them, I'm going to come to you in private, I'm not just going to blast you, you know what I mean? Like, that, that's just, to me, that's being a respectful adult, Apparently on YouTube, that is not expected, and I'm the minority, and I'm the asshole for that. <laughs> so it's, it, I don't know, it's its interesting. But I think, to, to add to what you were saying, the other part of this that I was thinking about is that I don't like attacking people for no reason, I guess. And on the one hand, it's like, I, I feel like he has every right to criticize me. Anybody mm-hmm. has every right to criticize me, even though, like, it's for me and anybody in my fan base that has watched me and has followed me, like most of my people were laughing. They're like, that's it. This is stuff you've talked about in, in great detail in length for a while. Um, and at the same time, like I said, at one point we were on friendly terms. Mm-hmm. And as a result, do I really, do I really want to go attacking somebody who I know their family's going through some stuff? We were on friendly terms. I've already. Listen, inst- I don't think that, I don't think that responding to this would be an attack uh, so much. Like, I think there's a way to do it that's not an attack on, on him, and that's simply defending yourself, which is completely legit- legitimate in this situation, because this entire video was about you, and, like, super personal. And I know that you, like, you said that you have said a lot of these things in the past in your videos, but to be fair, you've made a lot of videos, uh, and they're a long. A lot. <laughs> um, so probably the majority of people don't know a lot of these things. Like even me, like I, I, you know, I've only watched like what, 20, 28 minutes of it right now. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I didn't even know. Um, so I feel like even though it's not necessarily like outing you, um, because you've already outed yourself on a lot of these things, it is still exposing you to a degree to a larger audience, um, on a lot of things they didn't probably already know. So that's, that's kind of why I think maybe like one, one solid video responding to this hour long um, thing would be good. That was the other part. I'm like, how do you do one video? Like it would have to be a three hour video. Like if I, if I really went over point by point. um, I mean, this video is an hour. This, this video is an hour. And like, you know, you could, you could cut out a a decent chunk of some of this stuff, Um, you know, or, or not even use it. Like I'm afraid if I didn't, people would call me manipulative. Like I'm in the, by the way, I'm in, I wanted to get your opinion on this. I'm in this weird place of when people attack me, if I defend myself, then I'm an asshole. Like that's this, I'm in this odd box or maybe you're never an asshole for defending yourself. If there's, there's a way to do it. Like I said, like if you, if you respond to Repsion, you can, you can do it in a way that is defending yourself without necessarily attacking him. Like make it all about you. You know, I, that's what I would, that's my suggestion. But if you don't feel 
If you don't want to talk about it, I'm, I don't want to pressure you. Like, that's no, the last thing no. I want to do. But, you've, honestly, but, no, you've always been really nice to me. Like, I'm happy to, to talk to you about it any day. And I'm still sitting on it. Like, I thought I might respond, but just release it later. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of sitting with it right now. I, I guess my big thing is I don't really want to get into a big back and forth. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to have some kind I of... I doubt... Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't see him going on about this for a long time. I feel like this was his like one and done. Maybe he would keep going for a video or two. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't have a way of, of, of predicting that. I don't, I'm not psychic. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I do think responding and responding fast would be good for you. Uh, because the longer you wait, the, the longer people are going to wonder if, if you're, if you're not responding because of, you know, of some personal admittance of guilt or something. Do you know what I mean? Um, the I longer you wait. That the- too. I, I, that, that's the other thing. Like I've been in this, I've been in this place of playing a lot of devil's advocate with this because just trying to kind of weigh exactly what is the best thing? Because again, I'm not, there's nothing I'm trying to hide. Like there's, and I agree with you too, where I was like, you know, as much as he didn't do his research on this and he didn't like, and I, I mean, like out the gate. So like, I'll just, I'll fill you in on a couple of things. The first. So he missed piece, a lot, huh? The hour long video wasn't enough. <laughs> girl, girl. Okay. That, like the first piece where he's like, what was it? It was the first sentence about, so Katie. I don't remember. Or what did he say? He's like, George submitted something on this website. And I looked, I'm like, I never submitted anything on there. So, so Jacqueline, I'll give you a little overview if you don't know. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Um, from okay. uh, For a long time, and I still do to an extent. I had a lot of weird ass new age beliefs. I still do to an extent, but I, I view it differently. It's weird. I think I, I waste well, it's change. Right, right. And I, but the other thing is back then I didn't really know how to critically think that was something that kind of came later. So as much as I can sit here and say, oh yeah, I believe in like, I can sit here and tell people I, I think people could talk to the dead if they want to. And you I'm critically saying, think now, now differently, like now you're, now you consider yourself a critical thinker. I'm more so. Yeah. So I can, okay. I can still have certain beliefs, but the thing is I can now back then I was more resolute. If I had a belief, I would think it's fact for myself. Does that make sense? And now I'm more open where it's like, okay, I, you know, I, I maybe had some odd spiritual experiences or I've had, or I have some odd thoughts. Do I think this is what absolutely is? Nope. <laughs> that's, that's Do more you think so you're a psychic? Now. Um, that's just where it gets odd. I think everybody's intuitive to a degree. Everybody. Like, okay. it's, so like, for instance, just the whole thing of like, you know, when you can feel somebody looking at you from far, like from, from a distance or like you think about somebody and they call, I think everybody, or, you know, just kind of even to be able to read body language. I think everybody is intuitive to a degree. It just depends on what degree. Well, I mean, I think, you can be observable, but, but do you think beyond that, that there is some kind of like supernatural ability that maybe you possess that some others don't as far as like predictive abilities of the future and things like that. I mean, see, that's where it gets really odd because do I think anybody can predict the future? No. Do I think that that's, that's where it gets weird. Cause I think because you have free will, nobody can really determine what your future is or what is going to happen. Um, at the same time, like when I, because I, I've done a lot of like, I like doing a lot of, different research on sciences, especially when you've experienced with science, like a uh, spirituality with science. I love that sort of thing. And if everything boils down to like, everything is made of energy. And when I look at it from that context and that some people can pick up on different energy, just like anything, like even matter, matter, everything is just made up of energy. Then, then I have a, a different view where I think, see, and, I, and forgive me, I, I'm choosing my words carefully because I know the term psychic has a lot of different connotation with it that I don't agree with. Um, that's why I more use the word intuitive. Um, I do believe, like, I guess what you were saying, it's supernatural power to an extent. I do believe everybody has that to an extent. It just depends on whether or not people want to be open to it or use it. But do so I, I, I can be psychic. I'm just not tapping into it. it. Um, to an extent, but it depends on, again, it depends on what people like the definition. All right. Of- I predict that if you make a video response, <laughs> it'll be good for you. You think so? <laughs> okay, and like, <laughs> let me let me just ask you this because this was sure. my major my major question watching this this first half of the video. Um, he he seemed to think that because you had these these beliefs that you were conning people. Um, and I want to ask: Are these things that you that you like services that you offered to other people? 
Um, did you make, did you get paid for some of those? Was it like a thing where you were hired to like help people like faith healing to an extent? No, no. Okay. Let me, I'll go into this too. Cause I was, I was thinking about, and I've talked about this before, but so, okay. Um, this is where I'll kind of explain some of how I thought and how I structured and like how I do things now. So I came from a very, and I think if you and I've talked a little bit about this, I came from a very religious area. So I came from Independence, Missouri. Um, that is the, literally people think in Salt Lake, it's the Mormon headquarters of the world. If you look up Independence, Missouri, they have this big like spiral church thing. That is where like the headquarters is. And on top of that, we had a lot of Southern Baptists. It was a highly charged religious area. Okay. Um, and there was a lot of, I had a lot of judgment there. And so I was always somebody like who was kind of a spiritual seeker. And so rumors in my school started because I started reading books on like Buddhism and Taoism and Wiccan and Pagan just because I was interested. And okay. from then on, there were rumors that I was a witch and I worshiped the devil. And there was a time where people spit at me and it was shitty. And if that was in junior high and that followed me. Um, and uh, so what happened was when I left, and I ended up going to, when I went over and lived in Europe, I was around somebody for the first time who was really similar to me spiritually. So it was like I went from one extreme of the pendulum to the other, if that makes sense. And that's kind of how I look at it. So I dove head first into a lot of just really exploring myself spiritually. And one thing I came across, and I cringe at now, and by the way, it's not called the indigo movement. I was like, what the fuck is the indigo movement? So back then they had this theory called the indigo children, which um, from my perspective, Repsion did not, I want to say didn't get right, but at the same time that I think the term has evolved because like Jacqueline, this was like in 2004 and five. Like, so this was like 12 and 13 years ago. And basically the whole concept was, uh, what was it like a, some some psychiatrist or something wrote a book and said like oh the people from like the 1985 and beyond their auras are this color and and the whole concept for me was that I liked was that you know the people on the planet now are here to like help the planet and change it and this that and the other and want to make good changes and they're they're very intuitive and gifted and spiritual and that's because I was in that place of spiritual seeking at the time that's what I gravitated towards um, mm -hmm. what Daniel read off that website, which I don't know that website, by the way, like, and I'll have to explain that. I was like, that's, I've never submitted anything there. What is that? And I, I really quickly saw that, but, um, when it comes to what Daniel was going over and what he was talking about, like the biggest things he focused on, I was like, I never heard anybody say if you were on the spectrum, not to get help. Like I sat there with my mouth open. I was like, I've never believed that. I was like, what is he talking about? So, so just to clear some of that up, um, I, I know that like I've, I did a lot of, there was a time which I'm, I look at differently now where I was very much into like alternative medicine. And I still think, do like, you know if, what they call alternative medicine that works? What was that? Medicine. Anyways, there you one, go. <laughs> one of my favorite jokes. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of people are, are into that kind of stuff and that's great. But like the the one thing, and I don't know if I got a solid answer on this. Sorry. Did you did people oh my come God. to you for help? I didn't even answer your question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like it's been that's a long okay. day. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all good. Okay, and that that gets okay. That it all ties in. Thank you for for bringing it back. Forgive me. It's a long day. Um, Tim so, mentioned joke by the way. Yeah, that was a Tim mention. Yeah, that I think he had that. I think in in uh, his poem Storm, he, he said, "What do you call alternative medicine that works?" Medicine. I love Tim mention. He's great. I love it. I love Super it. Nice. Okay. I love it. Uh, but yeah, sorry. Did did people no, did people fine. come to you? So what? Okay, for so services. I'll get into that. So where that part is, I wrote two articles back then. I cringe at a lot of what I wrote because I'm like, oh my god, like I was just in a, a very very different place, very different mindset. I see things differently now. But at the very end of it, it was I think there was something about like if you would like like a reading or something something something, contact me. Um, I remember I believe only two people contacted me. There's one that I remember for certain. And the person asked, like, basically we had a phone call and I talked to him and I was like, you know what? I don't feel comfortable charging it. Like back then, basically with that. So you never thing, charged anybody for, for any of these services. No one paid you for Not for that. However, okay. there was one thing I did. It was in 2008, okay. maybe I answered mm -hmm. a Craigslist ad. There was a woman for, this was, I was going to tell you and this was, but totally separate from this. Cause this was a few years later. Some woman wanted somebody to do tarot readings at, at her party. And I was like, okay. okay. And it was supposed to be for fun and entertainment. I did it. And I left going, I don't ever want to do that again. So I did it one time, but it was okay. completely different from the time and like the articles that he's referring to. Okay. But, and so when you did that, did you believe what you were doing to be true? 
Um, I believed it could, I like, I, I came at it from the angle of, I thought I could possibly be helpful, but I also made sure to come at it from the angle of, Hey, this is like, this is something just for entertainment purposes. If that I makes see. sense. Like I wasn't coming at it. Okay. Like I'm telling you what to do. And if you don't do this, all, blah, blah, you know, it was just like, basically okay. I had people like, because I felt like I was very intuitive and I still to a degree feel like I, I'm intuitive to an extent, but again, like I feel like everybody's intuitive. I thought, okay, maybe this is something I can do. And I, you know, I have dabbled in things like the tarot and things. And, and so it was something that I tried and I ended up just not liking it all. I was like, this not, this is not what I like. This does not feel right. But no, I never had a clients and never did anything like that. Did but you make it clear then, though? Did you make it clear though to the lady with the tarot cards that it, that it yes. was for entertainment? So have you ever, yes. have you ever given services to people, um, you know, paid or not and not personally believed in that? Like, have you ever basically sold bullshit for some kind of benefit, whether it be money or attention or something like that? Have you ever no. done that in like a charlatan type of way or did you at all of these points genuinely no. believe in what it was that you were doing? Um, so like with the tarot stuff, as much as I say it's for entertainment, I also thought with the tarot stuff, hey, if I can help give, if, if I can help somebody see some insight, great. So it's both. Where, but I wanted to make sure people understand like anything I'm telling, like uh, who, who the fuck am I? I'm just sitting here like telling you some fucking cards and what they say. This is your own life. You do what you feel you need to do. But in terms of like that I ever like do any therapy with somebody or, or, or counseling on that sort of thing or, you know, no, no, that was a one, it was a one-time thing a few years later to try it out to see if I liked it. I didn't like it. So moved on to the next one. Well, not, sorry, I said moved on to the next thing. Just kind of nixed that off my list of like, that's not something that I want to do. And my whole premise back then was I really thought to help, like, I, again, because I went from a place of feeling like I couldn't talk about myself spiritually. I couldn't even explore that part of me. And I went to the other extreme. And when I went to the other extreme of, you know, exploring everything and wanting to jump into this stuff and seeing the indigo movement and going, oh, yeah, like, or the what they called the indigo children was what it's called back then, like, seeing the indigo children thing. And I, I everything I did was from a place of I thought if I talked about my spiritual beliefs, that's how I could help inflict positive change. And the biggest thing is, as I've gotten older, I realize that spirituality for me is something that's more, it's, it's more a sacred private thing for me. And it's something that's constantly evolving and changing. And I think the best way for me to try to be a, a, a positive person or a positive influence is just to be myself and just like, really just to be like, just to be present and be myself and just kind of share with mm -hmm. people and, 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 and do what I can in a real, like in a real aspect way of helping people, like, like right. feeding, feeding people who need like food and housing the homeless, right. like who gives a fuck okay. about ideas. Uh, -huh. so for my, for my show, like, I don't know if you know, I have this show that's coming out about skepticism and I, and I actually do talk about a lot of these things, which is kind of interesting that it's coming up now. Um, but one of, one of the episodes I went to a coven of witches and I got to speak with some of these people and they were like extremely kind people, but they did, they ran a business. So they had a shop where they sold things, they taught classes, they performed spells for people. Um, and I, I, I had a couple of, of private interviews with several of the people and I sat them down and at the end of the interview, and I really had to dig it out of them, um, it was kind of painful. But at the end of several of these interviews, I got these people to admit that they didn't necessarily believe in the supernatural aspect of what they were doing, but they did believe that they were able to help people because the people left feeling better. They felt they left in a better mood. And the fact that you could alter somebody's mood to a more positive state was magic. That's what they, they were calling magic. Um, and, but they didn't believe that it had any actual scientific basis uh, are you kind of on, on board with stuff like that? Or do you do you, or do you tend to lean towards thinking it's more real? Because like my issue with these people is they didn't really genuinely believe what they were dishing out. Some of them did, but some of them didn't. But they still, even though they didn't fully buy it, thought they were helping people. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So, and I'm sorry, because I, I don't, I was never, I never really dabbled in witchcraft that much. So I'm sorry. What was the, what was the exact question? I got confused. Do you genuinely believe in the supernatural aspect of what you're talking about and the, and, and continue to, um, you know, help people with that narrative or do you, do you genuinely believe it? Or do you think that, or do you think that there's not a whole lot behind it, but telling that to them is okay because it helps them anyway? Are you referring to like, sorry, I'm still, I'm, and maybe it's like I said, I'm tired. It's been a long day. So maybe I'm confused. So are okay. you asking if like, when it comes to the, 
like doing a reading or doing like any of this do you believe it genuinely works supernaturally or do you think that it's okay to kind of do it anyways even though you don't think it works because the person leaves healing better I think that's the, that's the other thing. What, like, I think we have to define what, like, the term supernatural is. Like, because that can mean several things to lots of people. Do I think that there are, do, do I think that Magic, there's... extraordinary, you know, not, not based in science. Well, yeah, I think, well, that's the, like, I guess in that, and if we go in that vein, when it comes to science, science is always evolving. We're always finding new things. So, like, the stuff, for instance, like, the stuff at CERN and the God Particle 100 years ago with science, that would be different. So... As much as I, it's it's weird. I love I love science. I can I see both ends of it, and that's the hard part. Like it sucks for me because I can sit and argue both places. Like I promise, I'm not bullshitting you. It's hard. It's really hard to answer because I can see both sides of it, or I can sit here and say, for me personally, th yes, I I believe. Like I have a lot of supernatural, I guess, beliefs. Uh -huh. Do I think it's a hundred percent real? Fuck, I don't know. Like, I can't sit here and tell you it is. I can't. Okay. I, I can't. I could never sit here and say like with, with certainty. But at the same time, we're in a universe, in my opinion, in a planet. Things are always constantly changing, even with science. Things are constantly even changing in science. So, but I'm not going to sit here and say I disbelieve science. I know. Yeah, okay, to... listen. I, I like I, people are saying she has a point. Science evolves. I know that science evolves, but like that's kind of that's kind of like skirting around the question. Like there, there is that which is based in reality and is science. And then there's that which people believe is supernatural, like ghosts and magic. Do I have any evidence that exists? Nope. Just, just my, just, just feelings, just okay. something that just. That's kind of what I, I was going for. That, that's what I wanted to know. So you do believe in supernatural things. So if you, if you were to like talk to people about that kind of stuff, you're not like in your head, like thinking, oh, this is bullshit and I'm getting you to buy it so I can get something out oh. of you. Okay. No, but at the same time, I don't that's not, the angle that it, Right, that's the angle he kind of, because he kind of said you were a con artist several times and gave the impression sure. that you were benefiting off of basically tricking people. But Someone, where's the evidence that I conned anybody? Or someone said, anybody. I feel like Repsion didn't directly accuse her of being a con artist. That's literally what he said word for word. He said con artist. So I'm not, I'm not. I'm not pulling that out of a hat, guys. Like, I will not be offended. Like, if anybody, including you, wants to go after any of the New Age stuff, do it. There's a lot of horse shit. That's why I left. Like, <laughs> I saw so much horse shit, and I realized, oh, my God, a lot of this is just people making money and full of crap. Right. That's where I can see your guys' point of view. I really, really can. Um, so, and cool. I agree with it. But anyways, I'm okay. sorry. Go. I know you All good. <laughs> All good. Uh, I'm sure I'll see you around the internets. No problem. Take care, Jacqueline. Have fun. Bye. Bye. Why haven't you talk, told your audience about this? Like, if you flat out made a video saying, yeah, I used to think I was a psychic, or I used to think I used to think I was an indigo child that could, you know, have these special powers. Well, she did say that. What she was saying um, on my broadcast was that she has talked about this publicly, so. I don't know. So, so on and so forth. Then I would give you a lot more leniency here, but the fact of the matter is you haven't talked about this, which makes me still think that maybe, maybe somewhere, someplace, you still hold these same beliefs. Or maybe um, she said that she has, uh, but even if she hasn't, who, who the fuck's business is it? And if she still holds the same beliefs, as much as I disagree, again, who the fuck's business is it? I'm not understanding where this is going. Maybe you don't. And if you don't, then by all means, what I'm saying here doesn't really... Like, this is, this is, I would not go after a Christian for being, just simply being Christian. If, you know, and, and attacking Christianity is not attacking every Christian. Attacking pseudoscience is not attacking every single person who believes in pseudoscience. But, like, attacking her because of her beliefs is very strange to single one person out. Like, if you have a problem with an area of pseudoscience, make a rant on that area of pseudoscience. If you don't like crystal healing, bitch about crystal healing. If you don't like psychics make a video on why psychics are bullshit i don't understand why this is necessary i i don't matter that much with the exception of why people are still casting doubt on your claims i just want full transparency here and that's why i'm asking questions because these questions explain why people are doubting you and doubt the things that you claim about yourself now a lot of people think that i'm i mean i get where he's coming from on that um but like Jesus, people have a lot of weird beliefs, and a lot of those people with really weird beliefs are doctors, are lawyers, are politicians. You know, it's called a personal belief for a reason, as long as it doesn't interfere with other things, which you can not necessarily prove that it is, 
then it shouldn't be talked about. I don't know. Okay, guys, sorry. That was super long. I know it was super long. I hope you liked it. Um, yeah. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section below. I'm sure by the end of this, you were drinking as much as I was during that broadcast because it was, it was frustrating to the point of needing copious amounts of alcohol. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye!